All right, welcome everyone. We're delighted to have you here for LUAG at Lunch, a student-led series of informal conversations about works of art in Lehigh University's art collection. I'm William Crow. I'm the director of the Lehigh University Art Galleries and professor of practice in the Department of Art, Architecture and Design. I'm really delighted to introduce our speaker today and facilitator, Juliana Forero Arevalo, who is a first year student at Lehigh um, and intends to be an engineering major um, and is joining us from Bogota, Colombia. And she will be leading a discussion about vulnerability in art. So with that, I am going to turn things over to Juliana. Uh, welcome, glad to have you here, Juliana. Thank you so much for that introduction. Um, so the purpose of the talk, I just want to let everyone know, is not for me to lecture on anything, but rather create a conversation between all of us and share ideas so you're able to grow as well as I, I can. So let's just start right away. So first, I wanted to start with the question, what does being vulnerable, what does being vulnerable mean to you? So if anyone wants to share or type it, Sometimes when I think of the word vulnerable, I think of um, sometimes being exposed, like, you know, like maybe, um, or being susceptible to something unknown or something different or challenging. Um, would you say that sort of like in a physical manner or like an emotional way? It, it could be either. I think sometimes I think about it physically first, but also it, it could be emotional. Well, the emotional shows up in the physical. Yeah, absolutely, that's true. Like sweat. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely say sort of when I, when I first started thinking about this, I would say that sort of, I feel like this can vary between people. Not everyone feels sort of vulnerable in the same situation. So for example, um, maybe public speaking for some people that might be really out of their comfort zone, but for someone else, it might be camping. So it really just depends on the situation and it depends on the person. So in this presentation, I kind of want to get to know some of you and your experiences being vulnerable. So first we'll look at uh, the, the first artwork. So I don't want to say much about it and I just want so, to get people to tell me what you see here and what emotions does this provoke on you? I'm not hooked up for the photo, so uh, for the picture. So I'll just have to listen. Okay, so uh, for the, for the people who can't uh, who can't see is a ballerina sitting uh, on about four chairs and she's looking down. It's a very straightforward uh, picture, a photograph. Whenever I think of ballerinas, I always think of like um, being very delicate, very kind of um, elegant and delicate in that way. Yeah, I was going to agree. Like to me, um, when I see a ballerina, I think of something fragile and just the way that she's placed it makes me think that she's in distress. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think what strikes me is like the way her feet are really pointed out. It kind of, it looks like she's almost relaxed, but the more you look at it, she really, to me, looks very tense. You have some comments in the chat box. Um, Gary said she seems introspective and Sebastian said she seems calm. And this is Gary. I just, it, it's hard for me to think of arenas as, as delicate and uh, or, or even vulnerable. I mean, that's, as, as athletes go, they're, they're pretty tough. At least the few I've known. 
it doesn't seem calm to me. I mean, it like, well, unless it's calm before the storm. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but uh, I think activity would certainly help, you know, just sitting there is, uh, doesn't help. Definitely. And all uh, those are valid uh, observations because ballerinas do have uh, the reputation of being really delicate and their, their movements are so perfect, but at the same time, yes, they are athletes. So um, I'm guessing. Yeah, from what, that's true. That's true. Yeah. From what I'm hearing is that some of you sort of see some kind of admiration for what she does, but at the same time, you appreciate the artwork because it is something really difficult um, to do. Um, okay, great. So I'm just gonna move on to the next piece. Okay. So once again, what emotions does this provoke on you or sort of the first thing that you see and why that is the first thing that you see? For me, this is um, very nostalgic, something like a memory or a uh, frozen in time in that way. Yeah, I would agree that this um, this painting does have that nostalgic feeling. For me, it just instantly made me feel calm because I kind of like see a moment of like mother and daughter, uh, you know, kind of just being out and with what looks like a dog. It's like the edge has kind of been taken off of the world, you know, with the with the way it's been drawn or painted. It seems, yeah, calming. Yeah, it like from what you guys are saying, it almost feels unreal. Sort of the the way that the brushstrokes are placed, it seems like like a dream. I would say. Um, so I just want to ask what may, why this painting makes you feel calm, sort of like pinpoint something that for you makes this painting feel relaxing. I think the color green may be the effect, um, because green is a very soothing um, color. Yeah, it should be deeper than that. particular color. Mm -hmm. I think also some of the imagery to it, it looks like there's maybe a fountain in the middle. Um, and it looks like maybe a woman on the left who's bending down to pet a dog. And that seems like a very calming thing to do, I guess, depending on the dog. <laughs> but in this situation, yes. Well, that's why pets, you know, during COVID here, pets are so important. Yeah, I would say too, the use of um, light, like the balance of the green, but also how the artist uses light in this really soft way where you can almost feel like the warmth of the sunshine is really calming as well. I completely agree. Feel it. Yes, I, I feel it. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. I, I would say that you can almost feel it like it's reaching out to you. So. <laughs> go to the final piece and then we can talk a little bit more in depth of sort of why we felt how we felt. So this is the last one. So same dynamic. If anyone wants to share why they enjoy it, why they don't enjoy it, you're more than welcome to. This one is um, so different juxtaposed with the last one with really kind of strong lines and um, sharp kind of edges um, where it gives you more of like a city or urban feel like a small town versus kind of being out in nature in the last um, in the last painting. But I do enjoy this because it still has that same sense of nostalgia with the young children which it looks like they're our young children are 
playing some sort of game in the middle of the street. So it's again, capturing like that memory or that moment. I think what stands out, what stood out to me at first was kind of like the fact that the town looked kind of like run down and stuff like that. But this um, piece of artwork doesn't give you or didn't give me at the very least any type of like sad feeling. And um, I would kind of like agree with Stacey. It is because of the kids being there and kind of like being collected. Um, although I honestly can't really tell what they're doing. It seems like they're playing. I would agree with what Sarah was just saying. I, I look at this group of people and I'm, we're kind of behind them or some of them and I wanna know what's happening there and what are they up to. And I also notice the size of the people in this work of art that they're, they're relatively small compared to the buildings and the landscape. So even though there's an activity happening in the middle, it's um, the, the people that we saw in the other two works of art took up much more space in the work of art than these people do. Just sort of referring to that in a comment that I saw in the chat, it sort of like you, uh, like it was said, the, foc the focus is not really on the people, but at the same time, it sort of is. And that's what gives it this calm uh, ambience, I would say. Uh, they're doing their own thing. And even though they're not the main uh, focus of the painting or the print, it still evokes some type of feeling. So by this sort of uh, looking at the children and what they're doing, would you say that looking at people evokes a more calm feeling? I think it really depends on the gesture they're making. Um, if for example, uh, like the last photo, the the two, the mother and daughter, are just like sitting, uh, sitting or standing there in a pretty silent mode. It would be different from, for example, a group of kids running around. Yeah, very true. Okay, so so we can move on to other activities. Um, I just want to see which one do you relate the most to, or maybe the one that sort of you would hang this on the wall of maybe your living room or your bedroom. So if you can put it in the chat. The first one, I mean. So a lot of variety, not a lot of pe people uh, picked the first one and that's completely valid as well. Yeah. Um, okay, so now we're just, we can, we're gonna shift more of like connecting what we see and why we see that and why we concentrate on that. So pulling it back to the main idea of vulnerability, how do you think, or maybe if you even think that culture that your cultural background affects your perception of vulnerability? Oh, can you rephrase that? Yeah. So maybe would you say that your upbringing? or the environment where you grew up had an effect on your values, especially vulnerability and what you see as being vulnerable? Yeah, oh God, that's a tough one. Yeah, well, there's some heredity in that too, you know, you can't help it. Mm -hmm. It's just the way to gene. <laughs> it's the way to, The way they're put together, the genes, or what's missing, or um. I, I think just from the the three photographs, right? So, so I, I grew up in the city. I, I was born in, in New York City. So that that third picture of uh, um, the more um, I 
guess, urban kind of kind of look. I, I wouldn't feel vulnerable in that situation because I'm more familiar with it. I grew up with that. The, um, the, the second one was, was more calming to me. I, I don't know that I would feel vulnerable in, in, in either kind of situation, but that certainly colors um, uh, when I would feel, uh, um, uh, or, or my background definitely colors when I would feel uh, um, vulnerable. And, and just as an example, I'm a city, city guy. I visit a friend out who lives in the desert of Arizona we're out in the desert at night, and I, I, I was frightened, a grown man frightened in the dark because it was just so uh, un unworldly to me. And that's just because I'm, I'm not used to it. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So um, from what you're saying, I would say that, um, you know, there's a sense of physical vulnerability because it was sort of a different um, space that you, you weren't used to, but at the same time that pulls to your emotions. And I feel like we're always changing how we see things and sometimes feeling out of our comfort zone really um, affects the way we look at other things. I don't know. I feel like um, with my cultural background and just the way that um, I grew up well, one thing, I'm Hispanic, so I kind of grew up being reinforced with that idea of kind of like that macho man and kind of just um, a wife as a housewife and stuff like that. So I feel like I have um, kind of like a strong like sense of viewing women and children as vulnerable in themselves. So like in the first picture, seeing like the ballerina there just by herself, kind of just in just in that state, like automatically to me, I felt like she was vulnerable, just being there alone, like not protected. And like the same with like um, the second picture with the mother, well, with the um, woman and the little girl and the dog, um, just because they were just out by themselves and stuff like that. So in that moment itself, like even though nothing was really going on and um, it was kind of like a calming picture, like I felt just them being out there, like they were being, like they were physically vulnerable, if that makes sense. Yes, definitely. And it's it's really interesting to see how everyone has different opinions. And that's what's so, I would say beautiful about art is that we can all have different interpretations and it can provoke different feelings within us. I would say that my favorite one was um, the ballerina. And I would say that because me, my upbringing, I was really into arts and I took ballet for a few years and I sort of appreciate that a lot more. So I would say that even though we don't realize it or maybe we don't care to reflect on it as much, our culture and maybe just the way that we that our parents raised us has a lot to do with the way that we see things. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it's wrong, but it's just, it's just different. So with that, I sort of just want to give a little bit more context on each piece. So I want to look at the location. So in this example, um, the ballerina, she was in Moscow in the USSR in 1987. Uh, so basically, from what I researched, um, ballet, but the ballet took a role uh, of, power, of power vehicle for political resistance and reform. So like some of you said that you see ballerinas as um, maybe being a little bit fragile. Some of you saw them as athletes, but for them in that cultural context, it was seen as a form of rebellion. So they were, be they were being vulnerable because they were actually going against the government. So does anyone want to sort of build on that or maybe see how that changed your perspective on, on the art artwork? Yeah, definitely, because it could also be seen as a, as a way of being strong because it's not easy to rebel uh, against big powers like a government above all. So I think that makes them seem a bit stronger than I interpreted it at first, I think. It definitely changes my perspective as well. Like looking at the picture, knowing that she doesn't seem like she's sitting down, sad, distressed about something. She seems kind of like more she's there like sitting down and thought kind of like 
just solid on her opinion. It's kind of more of like a, like she's sitting there um, to kind of like show off her strength. Like she's not going anywhere. Like she's not just gonna kind of roll over to whatever is going on rather than sitting there because she's like upset over some some guy or something. Uh, yeah, I, there's a lot going on in that ballerina one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like how I you think. said the sort of being strong while she's not really doing anything, uh, because Peter Turner, the so the photographer that took that took this, um, this this picture is part of the Moments of the Human Condition series, and he defines the series to sort of seeing how people just are in their environment, and but so for some people this picture, like I said at the beginning, it was just a normal picture of a ballerina. But knowing the background and the context of her culture, we now see that such a subtle movement can bring so much power to her artwork. Yeah, oh yeah, oh absolutely. Yeah, a lot of power. Yeah, maybe we no. sometimes don't realize that because we see things how we're used to seeing them. So we're gonna move on to the next one. And this was in France in 1895. Um, this I'm gonna was, ask you a year, yeah. yeah. I was wondering what years some of these were done. Yeah, okay. They're far apart. Some of them, well, this one compared to, to, the, one, to the other one. So we can definitely see a shift in culture and mindset. So actually in this time in France, there was, it was a period of optimism, regional peace, economic prosperity. And the artist, uh, Pierre Bernard, was um, very famous for showing uh, the naked body and the, in the domestic environment to show intimacy. So would you say that he was successful at portraying this in this painting? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, he's um, really captured this kind of intimate moment of um, the family dynamic between the young mother and the and the little girl and the dog. Um, yeah, and so to adding on to, to, to that, sometimes intimacy is not the same for all of us. For example, Bernard says that he wanted to uh, represent intimacy in the naked body. However, this is not really close to that, but it still represents some type, some type of intimacy. And maybe um, here I am just sort of guessing that this is what he thought that being intimate was and that might not apply to everyone, or if somebody wants to share about if they think that this is intimate for them. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not digging too deep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty physical, I mean, uh, you know, I, I don't know, it's, uh, you know, it's a lot more than, I don't know how much emotion there. I'm not looking at the picture, but, this nudity is, you know, you know I mean, superficial. Mm -hmm. I think one thing that for me makes this very peaceful and feels very intimate is, is not just the figures that are represented or the scene, but um, the way the artist has used paint. Um, I think one of the words that came up very quickly was memory or uh, nostalgia from the past and um, it seems like this artist is is using the paint in a really specific way to kind of maybe to get us to think about some of those ideas of peacefulness or intimacy or maybe memory yeah that, and maybe that connects to his values and what he wanted people to feel and from what people have said, and it sparks a lot of different emotions. So maybe we have to put ourselves in this person's shoes and Pierre Bernard's shoes to see what he wanted to express, or maybe not, or maybe we can just take it as we want because 
that's how we feel. There really aren't any rules for this. Okay, and since we're running a little bit of time, we're just gonna jump into the last one. So this was in Harima in Japan in 1951. So the, the, the painter was uh, Toshi Yoshida, I'm pretty sure if I said that correctly. And he grew up in a very cosmopolitan way, but had a passion for traveling. And somebody said when we looked at this painting that because of their background, they felt more comfortable with this. And that's sort of why the painter did that because even though he would travel a lot, he would sort of see the beauty of the places that he went to. And this is just my interpretation of it, but maybe he saw his home just in a different perspective. And maybe that's why he felt uh, vulnerable. So would you say that you feel more comfortable in places that are like yours? For example, like if you grew up in a city, would you feel comfortable and at home, if you're in another city, even though if it's not your own? Uh, that's a good question. I'd say more than, more likely, but not definite. <laughs> um, I think I can relate a little bit to this one because um, actually my parents were growing up in those um, circumstances similarly in China as well. Um, so the main impression that I saw from this picture is happiness instead of vulnerability, because I know that um, back in the time, they weren't worried about so many things like we are right now um, in this current era, because um, things were a lot simpler. And according to my, like their description of their memories, it wasn't um, a unpleasant time, even though the economic level or the um, like the life weren't as um, as with quality as of now, but they were really happy, like the little kids in this um, trend. So I think for me, the first thing that came up was in vulnerability when I saw this piece, but um, I, I couldn't make, I'm not sure about the background, so I didn't say it in the first place because I'm not sure if it's Japan or China or Korea, but um, it's a similar feel feeling, I'm sure, for those um, in that era. Yes, definitely. And what you said connects to the motto I found from this town in which they say, we hope to lead a good life with a, with a happy heart. All of us take care of each other, of each other's lives and rights. So one might not actually think of a small town as strong. So like with the first with the first artwork, we didn't think of the ballerina as someone strong, but with this one, like you said, there's a lot of happiness, even though we can't see it. Maybe that tells us a lot about what we see and how we feel, how we should feel about different things. So my my perspective of this artwork at the beginning was sort of humility and about a calm space, but the emotion of happiness and being grateful is also there. And I didn't see that. Hmm. Yeah, that can, that can make some calmness. Um, okay, so since I think we have just one minute, I just want to end with sort of a reflection and look back at the exercise that we did of choosing the paintings. So do you think your attraction to the artwork that you chose was influenced by your values or was it mo more of just like the aesthetic look of it or why were you attracted to them? My values. I don't think it's the... My own vulnerability. I would also say kind of like um, my values, when you asked us to pick the picture, like aesthetically, I would have honestly picked the ballerina, but I ended up choosing the second picture just because I felt like I see myself in it more, like I connect with that picture more. Um, growing up, like kind of like an open space rather than kind of like somewhere that was closed. I grew up around trees and stuff like that, so. Yeah, and by, by the by the comments and by some of the chat messages, 
each of you chose it sort of like on different things, some of you by personal experiences or just some attraction that you felt and that's completely valid. But um, if you want and you want to reflect on it more, maybe think of what makes you attracted to, to those pieces? Is there something that your environment that makes you say, oh yes, like this looks beautiful. This is what I think beautiful is. So it's just not for you to answer if you want, you can, but it's sort of to reflect when you see artwork, maybe in a museum or you go see some exhibition, reflect, reflect upon how your upbringing makes you react different to other pieces. And that's sort of the, yeah. the purpose of of this talk and um, I hope that everyone enjoyed it and they got to see a different aspect of looking at artwork and how it, there's so much meaning behind it that sometimes we don't see or we're blinded by it by our cultural differences. Thank you so much Juliana and as you just stated so eloquently too works of art um, change as we change, you know, as we look at them in museums and galleries, or even online, you know, our experiences, our upbringing, our culture, our language can really affect the way that we interpret works of art. So I think this was a great exercise in that. I want to thank everyone for joining us today and to especially thank Juliana Forero Arevalo for facilitating this conversation. You can join us for more online programs um, sponsored by the Lehigh University Art Galleries. If you go to our website, um, luag.org, programs come this seven uh, creative writing program. Um, doing democracy exhibition. And we have two uh, student-led programs tomorrow. Um, take care, everyone. Thanks again for us today.